Hello everyone and welcome to Wednesday's Weekly. This is your bite-sized briefing webinar, collaboration between Action Together, the voluntary community and faith sector and the public sector. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this episode of our Cost of Living Crisis series. Action Together are working with Oldham Council to welcome you every Wednesday between now and April to hear from the services and organisations that are working alongside you in Oldham, delivering critical help to support Oldham residents through the Cost of Living Crisis. So without further ado, really pleased to hand you over now to Diane Morris, who'll be taking us from here. Over to you, Diane. Okay, thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Diane, um, and I manage the um, support inclusion team um, in Oldham. So um, the team was formed in April 2021. Um, it was originally for people who were struggling with council tax arrears and debt but that has developed uh, much further now. So um, Paul is a team leader. Um, we originally had four officers, but because of the um, cost of living crisis, we've been, been allocated funding to have four new members to join the team. So they are uh, joined us in January and they're getting embedded in and hopefully we can offer a much wider um, service to those people who need it through the cost of living. Um, we get referrals from several different teams in the council and other organisations come to the support inclusion team. Um, we will see um, that we'll receive a referral. The city officer will have a look at it, ring the residents, discuss the situation and see where and how we can help them. And then we will create a case. Um, we will have like, um, the city officers will speak to the person, uh, work out their income and expenditure, um, see just, just see what we can do um, to help them regard the finances. So we are happy to take appointments over the phone or um, speak to them face to face. Currently, it's in Access Oldham or the libraries, and we're working towards meeting going to currently fails with town hall or chatterton town hall but all where the place-based um teams or hubs are going to be we are, we are happy to go and make an appointment to see um the resident there we look at um ev you know whatever we can some of them are, are quick win cases it's a case of reprofiling the council tax um having a look at some of the debts that they've got and let, like leading letting them take responsibility for the for their own sort of finances and themselves but letting them know that we are there if they need to come back to us there's others who take a longer um time with the team and it's it's we listen to them it's it's an, an holistic approach to um where they find themselves at the moment with relation to debt um and who we can help them with like um welfare rights for um go for dhp go to citizens advice and everything like that so we, we are we are linked into quite a few of the other teams as well um i think as you can see on the screen the referral process they come in from our helpline team from the council tax team debt recovery team um and then we can also see um from the outer that it's like positive steps um DV engagement team, adult social care. So any of the teams below on there, we are actively working with and do refer into people into the team where they think that we can help. Like I said, so we provide like low level budgeting support, um, help residents set up repayment plans for council tax arrears by liaising directly with the debt recovery team. Um, provide immediate help where we can. So if we identify an immediate need, um, then we'll happily provide um, bug vouchers, supermarket vouchers. Um, we can do food bank referrals and we can liaise with the warm home teams and provide fuel vouchers. We would ask the warm homes team to perhaps go and do a visit just to make sure that they are um, heating their homes in the most economical way that we can do. Um, and we've also got um, a winter warm pack, which we can provide via the LWP team that I also manage. That's the local welfare provision team. Um, and they are um, like radiator foils and things like that. A slow cooker, quilts, blankets, hot water bottles. So we are 
if we think a person can be identified as requiring a winter warm pack, then that's something that we can also look to provide for them. But we would do it through speaking to the residents and, sit and trying to assess the need for, for, for which items. Um, it is all about actually listening to the person. Um, our intention is to try not to pass them on to somebody else if, if, if the remit is within our sort of capabilities. If it, like I say, it is, it is lower level debt. If it's further on, that's when we have to go to citizens' advice or people better qualified um, to deal with things like that. But we deal with um, the bailiffs, um, enforcement agents. We can bring, we, we try and negotiate to bring cases back from the bailiffs that we think we can work with and get a better payment so that we're, try we're trying to get them out of a situation that isn't a, it isn't very nice to be in when you've got the bailiff going around and asking you know wanting your goods and um or demanding a higher payment plan that you then you can pay so we we'd work to negotiate with with the enforcement agents for the resident um so we currently have had 562 referrals into the system um, and the team are currently working with 138 open cases. We've resolved 307 cases and fortunately for us there is only 20 residents who have actually failed to engage following the referral which we think is quite a good success rate. The, uh, what we would do is we would still um, continue to try and engage with the person um because it you know whatever they're going through it might at the time we we make the first call it might not be a good time for them so we can be persistent um but there are times when we just have to think you know that that person just doesn't want to engage with us and um at, at the time they might come back through again and they might they might be in a different sort of state of mind to be able to be prepared to discuss the debts with us um because sometimes there is, you have to get the confidence of the resident to be able to open up to you and to be able to talk through why they're in the situation, how they've got in the situation, um, and to show them that there really is somebody out there that can help them. So we have a case study where this lady, she had council tax arrears of over £3,000, which was frightening for her in itself. Um, so we set up an attachment of benefit on her council tax accounts. So arrears were paid off and no further charges were applied. We referred the lady to the welfare rights team who helped challenge a DWP PIP decision. Um, we got her into, into onto free school meals. Um, we've encouraged residents to address utility debt and, and with the possibility of an energy grant. We've signposted it to the bread and butter thing to help feed the family and we made sure that the resident was registered with the healthy start scheme for help to buy food and milk so you can see it's not just a a single thing we don't you know we do, we do like the holistic thing where where can we help this person how can we help this person um so case study number two <coughs> excuse me the resident mentioned she will experience some financial difficulties and some debt, particularly with energy supply suppliers um, to Opal, um, which is the Old and Personal Advocacy Limited. So they reached out to the um, support and inclusion team, which is so that's somebody else who's referring it into us, not just the resident herself. Team made contact to discuss the financial difficulties, to check all the relevant benefits were received and whether support to contact the energy supply could help. So we supported a um with her energy debt and we actually applied to the uh, british gas energy trust on her behalf um and they we were successful and that she was awarded the grant towards the gas and so it's it's, it's over a thousand pounds that we were able to get for her from the british gas energy grant um to help her towards uh gas electricity um so Future developments, the reporting side of the CRM system is being developed to include identifying residents with multiple referrals and cases. So who's touching us the most, where are they coming into us from? Are they coming into the welfare rights, um, helpline support inclusion team? 
um, LWP. Um, ICT are working on providing notifications and reminders to residents who have appointments booked. So if we make an appointment, then we'll send out a notification to confirm the appointment at such a time, such a date. Um, the, for the referral process, the internal officers complete a referral form into CRM. Um, external organisations complete an online web form, which we've recently um, launched. Our next step is in, to integrate the form directly into the CRM. So if you have any questions for myself or Paul, um, then happy to take them. <laughs>